Hi guys, welcome back to the new video for your channel. So in this video, we will be dealing with the proton pump inhibitors. So what are proton pump inhibitors? They are drugs which will inhibit the proton pump. So what is proton pump? Yes, we will be dealing with the mechanism of the proton pump in the coming session. So Antacid. What are antacids? They are what? They will be neutralizing. They are excess acid secretion. So these are drugs that will inhibit the production of excess HCl. So we can see how they act. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button for more notifications. So why they are used? Proton pump inhibitors are the actual medications which is used to reduce the stomach acid production. So what happens? They will be inhibiting the acid secretion. So they are used to treat esophageal, duodenal and stomach ulcers, normal ulcers, NS8 associated ulcers, gastroesophageal reflux disease and zollinger ellison syndrome. So if you want to learn more about these topics, you can just google it out and know. Basically, everybody will be no idea about the basic pathology of ulcers. So, what is the mechanism of action? So, carbonic anhydrase helps in the formation of H2CO3 from CO2 and H2 within the parietal cells. So, parietal cells will be secreting H plus into the lumen of the stomach. So, this is actually the mechanism. So, H plus is secreted, you can see the number 3. H plus is secreted into the lumen of canaliculi of parietal cell in exchange for K plus. So, what happens? There is H plus K plus ATPase pump. That is the proton pump it will be working by taking one atp molecule so it will be uh, giving out the h plus from parietal cell to the stomach lumen and it will be taking k plus in return so this is actually happening the, you can see this is a parietal cell this is the inside of the parietal cell this is interstitial fluid this is the lumen of stomach so what happens this is the h plus k plus atpase pump so what happens proton pump inhibitors drugs will block this H plus ATPase pump. So what happens? It will not take out H plus from the parietal cell and give into the lumen. So what happens? The concentration of lumen H plus decreases. So what happens? The diffused chloride, that is chloride ion, will be diffusing in exchange with the HCO3 produced inside the parietal cell. So what happens? Chloride ion will be simple diffusion. They will be going to the lumen. So they will not get much much H plus ion to combine with. So what happens? They come back. This is actually the mechanism and the drugs which we are dealing with in this video will be blocking the H plus K plus ATPase pump or the so-called proton pump. So this is actually the another picture representation. So the most common side effects of proton pump inhibitors is, as usual everybody will be telling headache, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, flatulence, fever, vomiting, nausea, rashes. So other serious side effects that are associated with the PPIs include, so PPIs has got many other uh, symptomatic problems that is toxic epidermal necrolysis, pancreatitis, reduced liver function, erythema, multiformity, etc. So mnemonic, so you can easily recognize the proton pump inhibitor drugs with the prazole. So they will be ending with prazole. The all drugs which are categorized into PPI will be ending with prazole. So, don't forget this prazoles. So, you can see the example that is omeprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole. So, pantoprazole and rabiprazole are very famous drugs. Esmo, esmoprazole, dex, lansoprazole. So, in the bracket, I have given the trade names of these drugs. So, you will be, whenever you go to a medical sector, you will be knowing only the, these names. But you have to understand what is the content of these brand names. So this is actually a video. So in the coming video, we will be dealing in a very detailed section with all these drugs. That is, we'll be dealing with omeprazole and lansoprazole in different different videos. So thank you guys.